Hello. Today we're going to be talking about how rhetoric is everywhere and how its utilization can help you form strong arguments and make you a better writer. In this video, we want to show you how rhetoric, which falls under the umbrella of higher order concerns, can have more of an impact on your writing and speaking than elevated language and perfect grammar, otherwise known as lower order concerns. Learning these rhetorical tools can empower you as a writer. Aristotle is known as the father of rhetoric and defines it as the art of observing in any given case the available means of persuasion. He created the rhetorical triangle to, to illustrate these available means. Dr. Hepzibah Roskelly from the University of North Carolina Greensboro explains the ordinariness of rhetoric and how this triangle can be used in any conversation, situation, or a paper. The triangle shows how three interdependent elements, the subject, audience, and speaker, interact to compose a strong argument. When choosing a subject, you should think about what you already know and need to know, the different perspectives the audience could have, and determine the best way you can support your subject. Examples of subjects are the theme of a novel, a scientific experiment, or even reasons for the Civil War. When considering the audience you're writing to, you should think about the reader's prior knowledge, expectations, and possible differing points of view. Often the prompts given to you by your teachers outline who you are writing for. In cases where you are writing to a broader audience, you should be careful of using language that could be interpreted as confrontational and don't make too many assumptions about the reader. As a speaker, you have the opportunity to create a persona to deliver your argument. All papers have a voice, so you should consider the tone that best suits your argument. Your tone, language, and use of quotes, or paraphrasing, all affect the voice of your paper. Just to recap, the subject involves thinking about what you want to say and what you are writing about. The audience involves thinking about who you are writing to or speaking to. The speaker involves thinking about how you are portraying yourself as an author. Now let's look at the three rhetorical appeals, ethos, pathos, and logos. You can appeal to ethos by offering evidence that you are credible. You can appeal to pathos by drawing on the emotions or interests of the audience so they will be sympathetic to your arguments. And you can appeal to logos by offering a clear, reasonable idea and backing it up with examples and details. It's important to note that you won't be using all of the appeals in every argument. For example, in the sciences, pathos is not valued. However, the rhetorical triangle should always be considered in every argument. We know this seems like a lot, but you are most likely already employing these techniques innately. This video will simply organize it for you. Now here's a quick example of how ethos, pathos, and logos can be used in a simple comic. In the first panel, Kanye West is establishing his ethos and credibility by saying, I am a god thereby making his statement that Beyonce's album was superior to Taylor Swift's more credible. In the second panel, Taylor Swift employs ethos as a comeback to Kanye West's interruption by introducing herself as the first woman to win Album of the Year at the Grammys twice. She then appeals to pathos by relating herself to her audience of young women through an emotional speech. In the third panel, Kanye West is again making a weak attempt at using logos, stating, But I made that girl famous. Taylor refutes Kanye's statements using logos by stating a statistic about the number of albums sold in a week of release. Clearly, Taylor's appeal to ethos, pathos, and logos was more persuasive than Kanye's. Sorry, Kanye. Now you should understand how to use the triangle along with ethos, pathos, and logos to create sound arguments. Having even a light grasp of these rhetorical techniques will help empower you as a writer.